Here we are then, here's the first of our seven drawing challenges. With this particular study, I'm going for something in between that really loose quick sketch and a really polished, refined drawing by retaining some of the marks. So I want some of the mark making to show through, some of the white paper to show through, but it's gonna be a little bit neater. I'm gonna have some lost and found edges within there than say a really quick uh, sketch, a quick five, 10 minute sketch, which is gonna be really, really loose and really, really energetic. The techniques that we go through in terms of creating that solidity, that solid, believable form, are exactly the same. It just depends on how much time, how much patience you have to put into the actual shade inside of things to create really neat lines, to create neat transitions across values, to get rid of all of the white of the paper. That choice is yours. The techniques are the same. Now in terms of those techniques, those techniques to create really believable solid form, it all comes down to the play between light and shadow. So if we take one of our P's, for example, and we've got the light source that is coming from the top left as we look at it, it creates a shadow on this side of the sphere. But obviously if I just shade it in one flat value, and when I talk about value, I'm just talking about the light or dark level within that particular tone. So this is a strong value, this is a lighter value. And obviously you can go stronger with the softer pencils and lighter with even less pressure. So these are different values. So just using one flat value obviously doesn't create this believable spherical form. What we've got to create is a transition that goes from a strong dark on this side that gradually gets lighter and then gradually lighter across what we call the terminator or bed bug line, then lighter again until you're only left with the highlight. And then you can use our stronger pencils so I can go with a 4B and just strengthen the shadow around this area. And it's that transition, that smooth transition from a dark value to a lighter value that creates the illusion of a sphere. And if you put a cast shadow in, it helps to strengthen that illusion even further. Now you could spend lots of time really gradually moving one value to the next so it's completely seamless. You get rid of all of the paper surface. You could even get a blending stump and make it look even smoother. And that's going to take time. That'll give you quite a realistic, quite a photorealistic result. However, if you want a looser feel and maybe go with some hatching marks and cross hatching marks, the actual technique of seeing where the darkest areas are and how they gradually transition, that is exactly the same. It's just that you are using different marks. Let's go to the 4B pencil. And you're allowing more of the paper surface to show through. You're allowing some of the marks to break the line so it's not this nice, neat circle. Maybe do some cross hatching in the shadow there. And then if you want to go really quickly, if you're doing a really quick sketch and maybe you're timing yourself and you're saying, I'm going to do this within 10 minutes or so, you might use backwards and forwards motion, stronger values, keeping it really, 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 really loose, really energetic. But what you can't do is you can't skip this process of looking for where the strongest darks are and making them dark enough. So the one mistake, whether it's this style or this style or this one, the one big mistake that I see so often is that the darks are not made dark enough. So these here, people are too afraid to go too dark with them because once they go too dark, they can't erase them. So they hold back. And what you end up with is, if you do that over the whole drawing, is something that is quite flat and that lacks any real punch or depth. So I'm going to go for this kind of a style here, maybe a little bit neater, spend a bit more time than I did with that example, but I'm going to go for this as opposed to this one. And stylistically what I'm going to try and do is maintain these hatching marks right throughout the drawing. So on the actual pod itself, maybe within the shadow as well, maybe within some of the surface texture, but trying to get that consistency and that continuity right throughout the drawing is really good from a stylistic, from a compositional point of view.